Y'all ready? ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? ready? Welcome to the Upside Down Smiley Show where we talk about real life but we don't take life too seriously. My name is Shireen and we have Tina here and today we are going to talk about sexual, physical, and mental abuse. Cue the intro! because it brought me Tina and Tina reached out to me after she saw some of my work and started sharing some of her story and she actually connected with one of my other um, guests, Vina. Vina, yeah. Yeah. And so I'm just so thankful for the community that we've kind of created on the yeah. internet. I'm so thankful for you to share this because I know in general as a society this is a major issue but definitely in the Indian community there's a lot of abuse and there's not a lot of talk about it yeah. and so you are super brave and I want you to know that. And this is going to help other people feel seen and heard. And I think the, the other major thing we, I want us to talk about is your journey. Because I think that is the important part about this. Yeah. Where you are at right now. Because all of this sucks. Yeah. And all of this was terrible. And I, I w don't wish this upon anyone. But you are who you are right now yeah. because of it, right? Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your story. Okay, so I'm Tina. Um, so, born in Chicago, actually, mm -hmm. um, but we moved to Orlando, Florida, so I'm in Florida. Okay. Um, after high school, I got shipped to India. <laughs> shipped. shipped to India. My dad was like, you're not going to succeed here. It's all, you know, Indian parents, they want everything fast. So you yeah. get to skip your whole undergrad. Um, yeah. So I went to India, did med school, and now I'm back. So just preparing for my residency and okay. exams and stuff, and that's where I'm at right now. So, obviously, like, going to India, I was only 19. Okay. So... It was a big culture shock, mm -hmm. and um, I noticed there was things were different. Mm -hmm. Especially, I was the only American girl on the campus, so okay. I, I got a lot of attention from guys. Okay, you know, because mm -hmm. um, they have this perspective of us that apparently we only walk in bikinis all day and get into mm -hmm. people's beds. Like that's really what they think of you. Like, oh, American, I could totally tap that. Yeah. Um. So that's how I was constantly being approached. Um. Mm -hmm. And because I was getting attention from the guys girls obviously didn't like it yeah so I was very alone a mm -hmm. lot and um, that's when I, I met someone um, I was not looking for a relationship or anything like that yeah. but I, um, I met someone and became really good friends and I guess like being in India and being alone and you don't have your family you don't have your friends yeah. anyone that just is nice to you you just Oh, okay, cool. I have a friend now. Right, right, right. Great. And it's just a natural thing. It's a natural thing. I, yeah. I honestly, with like, I feel like when you spend um, time with either the opposite sex or same sex, depending on what you're attracted yeah. to, it just naturally can happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, the attraction can naturally happen. Exactly. They got into a relationship, and as the relationship, we got more comfortable. You know, my, I'm very close with my dad, mm -hmm. so I immediately told my dad about it. My mm -hmm. dad's like, oh, yes, I'm going to have a son. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Um, it became serious, like, you know, family and everyone um, knew about it. But once it got comfortable, once the family knew about it and stuff, um, I guess probably the person felt like, okay, now there's no going back. I have this girl right have here. have a hold on her. Exactly. Yeah. It's um, like a sense of manipulation almost. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so that's when the abuse started. Um, mm. It started off just getting angry and mm -hmm. raising their voice and I was just like, and you know, just coming from here, you know like that's wrong. Like yeah. a guy raising their voice at you and you're like, wait, what? No, right. no, no, no. I kept thinking, well, maybe this is how it is because we're Indians. Right, because mm. um, we see that in our parents, like our parents raise their voice at each other and they yeah. yell and they say things. So I was like, okay, maybe it's a normal thing. I'll get used to it. Yeah, right with it. And then the cursing starts, and you're okay. like, oh, okay. Uh, this this is where it's gonna stop, right? Like right. that's probably where it's gonna stop. And then you just, and at the same time, I'm alone in a yeah. whole different country. So and I, I was kind of dependent fear. on him. exactly. I was very very dependent, um, and I felt like. I had to take care of the person. You feel like you're mm -hmm. like this motherly person like that. Yeah. So all of that, like I had so many responsibilities. I felt like I was the person's like mom, sister, everything. So then it started to get physical. Mm -hmm. um, and I, and this is actually a story that, um, that I still get nightmares on. Um, so we're always on and off breakup and stuff. So one day mm -hmm. my dad's really close with him. And okay. one day my dad called him and uh, a girl picked up. Okay. So, you know, our dad thinking, oh wow, this guy's cheating with my girl. But 
I was so invested in this person. I was like, and my dad eventually called one day. He's like, hey, I don't think this is gonna work out because this is what happened. A girl picked up, girl said his name. And I was like, no, you know, he always gets drunk and leaves his phone somewhere. Maybe some girl picked up. Like, I was like, mm -hmm. I have to change my dad's, you know, yeah. whatever his like thoughts are. Like creating stories for him. Yeah, so I call this person. I'm like, hey, I'm not accusing you, but um, can you just tell me where you had a party or something? Like, maybe some, some idiot picked up the phone. Like, I have to like change the story for my dad because I don't want him to see anything, say anything bad about you. And the person just just cursed me out saying, oh, just call me a bunch of names, like don't don't criticize me, I don't do anything. Just hung up. Mm -hmm. I remember the next day, we had this big festival at our college, mm -hmm. and um, it was easy to sneak out, because mm -hmm. there was just so much stuff going on, and he calls me and he was like, hey, I know you were fighting, but I wanna, I wanna fix this, like let's, let's go out, mm -hmm. let's meet up. So I went, met up with this person, mm -hmm. Uh, he picked me up um, with his friend, which I didn't know who that person was at that mm -hmm. time. We were driving, went to a house, mm -hmm. and um, this guy takes me to the room. Mm -hmm. um, and he just like hugs me and he was like, hey, um, are you sad? Are you still mad at me? And then just slaps me right across the face. Wow. And that was the first time, I mean, my dad's never even slapped me. Yeah. And um, it was like a shock. And he comes up to my ear and he's like, never ever call me a cheat. Wow. And I just stopped and I started like tearing up and he would slap me again. So anytime I would um, say a word or if I had a tear running down, he would just slap me. Mm -hmm. So I had a- It was like a punishment. It was a punishment. Mm -hmm. um, and he, it was like, uh, it was so weird. And then every time like he would move his hand, I would flinch. Yeah. And he's like, oh my gosh, baby, I'm so sorry. Like, I'm not gonna hit you again, okay? It's it because you did that. I already mm -hmm. hit you, but it's not gonna happen. Okay, don't worry. And he comes, gives me a kiss on the cheek and slaps me again. So it was a very mental torture. I couldn't, I when I say no, he, again, I kept getting hit. Mm -hmm. So I was, forced into it and at that time you don't think rape because yeah. you're like i you're, know this person i'm in a relationship with this I'm person and and, and if i think you a, say lot that times, a lot of times people their yeah. situation it's, it's not this right it's not yeah. with the in a relationship and at that time you can't say that to anyone but well you're with the guy what do you what do you mean it's not right. rape and i'm like oh okay never mind the next day i call this person i say hey are you still mad at me yeah and he made you feel so small so small and I remember at that time, I used to question myself because I'm from here, you know, I'm, mm -hmm. I know what abuse is, I know what rape is, but why did I react that way? Mm -hmm. Why was I okay with it? Right. And I used to hate myself. I remember I couldn't look in the mirror for three years because mm -hmm. I used to feel disgusted at myself because I'm like, I was this girl who was so strong. No guy could ever raise his voice at me. Like I knew my worth and I'm over here getting beat up and raped and constantly being abused by someone. And I remember even my friend, like I had a friend who asked me like, hey, can you be my my, my daughter's godmother? And I'm like, oh, hell no. Like you didn't think I you don't, were deserving. I, I'm like, you don't know what I've been through or what I've done. And that girl does not deserve me as her godmother. And I hated myself. I know that a lot of girls do go through this. Yeah, and thinking and they it's their fault. They can't, they can't talk about it. Mm -hmm. It's well. You went there with the guy. You you decided. Asked for it. Yeah, you called him the next day, and that was a question. I'm, I was always like, why, 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 why do I keep going back to this person? Um, mm -hmm. And that's you said the answer of manipulation. Mm -hmm. And it, that's like the question that used to like haunt me so much. I'm like, I can never answer that. And then yeah. I got a manipulation. And I remember he eventually told me because I was like, why did you hit me and why did you do that? He's like, oh, it's because I love you. Mm -hmm. I don't. That's hit, not I don't. I don't hit and abuse people who I don't love or I don't care about. You're not mm -hmm. a stranger. It's because I love you. So you learn your lesson. And obviously, it didn't stop there. It mm -hmm. got worse and worse and worse. So every day of my life in India, and I still don't know how I went through med school. That's where God comes in play. I know. Your sweater. My sweater. <laughs> yes. I was telling you, like, how did you get through med school? I'm like, I don't even. I don't remember any of it. <laughs> like, yeah. it's all God. And I felt like when I came here, and I used to be angry at God. 
Mm -hmm. I used to be so angry at my bad. Like, why, why is this happening to me? What did like, I do wrong? I was like, all I did was love and care about, care for this person. I hear so many stories where kids come and tell their parents and they kind of brush it off because yeah. either they don't believe them or two, they don't want to believe yeah. them. Yeah. And I think that often happens when the kids are younger, yeah. which is so scary and so terrible. And I've had people reach out to me in that situation. When you're an adult and you feel like you're strong and you can make your own decisions and yeah. then someone has this power over you. I mean, I'm pretty sure most of us have been in a really crappy relationship and you're just like, but what, why did I do that? Why, why was I yes. Why was I with that person for yes. so long? Yes. But it's just people, you know, people are able to manipulate you. They, they know like your emotional like I don't yeah. know what it is like what your triggers are yeah and they know that they have a hold on you probably something that he learned you know and I'm not saying that's that's right yeah, yeah, yeah. but this is kind of like a cycle yeah of, that of like where, where are people learning these things probably yeah. at home he would share about how his parents are and he would say yeah my mom like yeah my mom never speaks when guys are talking my mom has to stand by the corner mm -hmm. or this you know he would actually explain to me how his dad speaks to his mom and I'm like wow like that's just wrong yeah i was i was in my dorms and i was walking around i remember i heard like a girl was crying in her room yeah. and she was like it was like probably midnight and i know what it's about i know like that girl was seeing some guy and i i know i like so i started knocking on the door i'm like open the door i picked up the phone and i hung up i'm like you are not gonna let any guy talk because i knew what it was about mm -hmm. and that's when i knew like my purpose yeah i was like no 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 one's gonna go through this yeah. and ever since then i've been like helping girls and I started like talking about my experience and people started reaching out to me and you're always like this happy like our chichi like always mm -hmm. happy like we never knew that like, you're going through this and I'm like yes even people in your own class Ev everyone goes everyone's going through something and they were like but why for seven years did mm -hmm. you stay and I'm like you know that's a question I like can't even answer. Don't have an answer for it, but I mean it's it's led you to one the strength and to this yeah. purpose. I think sharing your story and being that that person for other people yeah is is super important we're coming back here because i was so dependent on that person I felt like i was discovering who i am and it's mm -hmm. just and that process was so beautiful my main thing as well is like in our indian community when it comes to abuse either people just they know it's happening but they just don't want to talk about it or they deny it or yeah. they it's so easy for them to just oh yeah it's normal yeah but i feel like there's a lot of suicide rates it's yeah. super high. Like I used to always get questions like when um, people ask me like, hey, what if we know someone yeah. that's going through this? Mm -hmm. What I always say is there's no point in talking to them. The only way I actually really kind of got out of it is I physically had to come out of it. Like I, I came all the way here in America. The person's in India. I'm here. I was mm -hmm. like, so I tell them, please just kidnap the person. Yeah. Drive as far away. Take Space, them to a different, distance. a far distance. I don't care. Lock them up in a room, something. It's going to take time. Like, they physically have to be away from there. Right, because they need to have, like, separation from that power. They have to. They have to, like, phones, everything. You just, you know, they'll, they'll thank you later. And I think there was a point when my dad did that. Mm -hmm. um, I think my dad actually showed up at that person's house and mm -hmm. went to his parents and was like, your kid is ruining my daughter's life. Like, wow. Well, um, that's a great dad. Time, I feel that, like, always heals. Yeah, it's and it, but it's hard. And <laughs> it is you, hard. And I feel like we're always hard. very impatient. Yeah. And we're always just like wanting it to, to yeah. be fixed and be ready right Just right to away. get that first step of like, okay, I wanna, I want things to change. You just really have to cut everything. And sometimes like just reach out to a friend. Yeah. Um, and just be like, just force it. Just here, take my phone. Tell me. Yeah. Just do it. Yeah. Um, and I think that's also something that's that's in our community as well. Like I, I guess because it's such an embarrassing thing. Mm hmm. People can't talk about it. Yeah. You know, I couldn't talk about it. Like when I came back that night, I went back to my dorm acting like everything was okay. Yeah. I think a because lot of us do that. One thing I want um, people to take out of this is one, it's not your fault. And second, like you said, it's not love. It's yeah. really not love. You, and it's all manipulation. It's hard for people to talk about this, especially in our community. And yeah. I can tell you right now, I'm available to talk yeah. to you. Um, I'm available to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and and I think we need to start encouraging um, just our community to have a platform for this to be like discussed. Like you should be able to go yeah. up to your friend and be like, "Hey, this happened to me," and not be judged. And I think one thing I get a lot of messages about is my parents are not going to understand mm -hmm. in many situations about school, about this or this or this. Give your parents a chance. 
yeah is my biggest advice to you give yeah. your parents a chance because I, they may do things they may react to things in a certain way but they honestly they love you yeah and they want you to be okay if you haven't even brought this to them yeah or even if you have Give them another chance. Reach out to your family. Definitely. Reach out to your friends. You don't need to do this alone. You will get through it. I'm still getting through it. Like yeah. it's it's a process. It's not like a, it's not an easy thing. It's been two years since I've been back home, yeah. and I still get nightmares about it. Yeah. Um, but I'm I'm healing. Yeah. And it's it's a beautiful process. It really is. Right. You appreciate that. Yeah. Then I feel so strong. Yeah. We're physically strong. too. Oh, physically too. <laughs> physically, I started kickboxing. I okay. I started lifting weights, and yeah. every time I'm like. I want someone to try to touch me now. <laughs> but we're not Bring encouraging it. it. Not Any encouraging that. that though. But, but, but I, feel I feel stronger. I feel stronger. I'm not going to go out looking for a fight. But, <laughs> but you, you know, can protect yourself. Yes. You could be this. You could be just like her. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate no you. Yeah, thank you guys all so much for supporting this work. I know it's important. So yeah. that's why I continue to do it. Your stories are important. You are important. Please, please remember that. Yeah. Definitely. And mm -hmm. if you have anything to share and discuss, yeah, please come out, through. Right come here. Through. I want you guys person. here. Thank you. Bye bye.